caddy. I mean, caddy's baby V series. It's you can charge it at a Tesla supercharger anywhere in the world. It'll hit zero to one hundred or zero to sixty-two miles an hour in three and a half seconds, and honestly, it actually looks pretty damn good, guys. If you're living in the United States, this is a legit option that's actually worth having a good look at. Let's have a look at this new EV from Cadillac. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking, guys. Thank you to our YouTube members and our Patreons. I really appreciate your support. It's what helps me keep the channel going. Cadillac is targeting the Tesla Model Y performance. This is meant to be a legit rival to the Model Y performance. It's a bit bigger than a Model Y, a bit more luxurious. Um, it does have one downgrade versus the Model Y, that one area where it's clearly not as good as the Model Y, but some other areas where you could say it's actually better. Cadillac's impressive electric vehicle lineup is actually selling pretty well, and this is the new Optic V. It's a performance-focused, I guess you could sort of call it, a, it's like a crossover, SUV, a wagon, and it's the first vehicle from General Motors to have a NAX charger that's on the side of the car. So you don't need an adapter. It has a Tesla supercharger plug on the side of the car, which is, I think, a really good idea. From my experience driving in the United States, there were so many Tesla superchargers that um, you want to be using that network. It's just so much easier than the other networks. The next port is great, but the V-Series, it's really, it's not about being a Tesla rival. It's more about being a performance luxury car. And I think it does that really, really well. It has dual motor all-wheel drive, and that produces an estimated 519 horsepower, which is 387 kilowatt and 650 pound-feet of torque. That's 880 newton meters of torque. Actually, pretty similar power figures to the Model Y performance. And it's a bit heavier than a Model Y. It's a bit bigger, a bit bigger battery pack. Therefore, it weighs 5,445 pounds. That's 2,470 kilograms. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's about 400 kilograms. In fact, nearly 500 kilograms heavier than a Model Y performance. Big difference, right? It's a 1,000 pound weight increase. But it still performs really well. I mean, 3.5 seconds, 0 to 60 miles an hour, that's 0 to 96 kilometers an hour, when using launch control is pretty damn quick. Speaking of that actual battery pack, though, it's got an 85 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. It's an NCM battery, provides a range of 275 miles or 443 kilometers. That's EPA range. WLTP, it's probably closer to 300 miles. Yeah, I mean, it's still a fair bit less than some other options you can get, but, you know, this is a pretty big car. That's 27 miles, though, and 43 kilometers fewer than the standard model. So, the yeah, range is probably slightly underwhelming, I'd say. Anyhow, DC Fast Charger can give you 70 miles, 113 kilometers of range in 10 minutes, say, Caddy. So... Charging seems to be pretty quick. I think the charging max speed is 350 kilowatt. So that's one benefit it has over any Tesla models. It can charge faster, theoretically anyway. At home, you can expect to get 18 miles of range per hour using a 7.7 .7 kilowatt charger or 31 miles per hour with an 11.5 kilowatt charger. That's 50 kilometers in one hour. And actually, guys, I did this today in my car. My, my Xpeng, I charge, I had it charging at 11 kilowatt and I added, I probably added close, about probably 55 kilometers of range within about an hour. So yeah, pretty good to be able to do that, to be able to sit in your, you know, be able to use, well, personally, I only use solar to charge my EV. I only charge it when it's actually going to be powered from the sun. During a media talk earlier this month, lead development engineer on this vehicle, Alex Doss, told, well, they said the Optic V is designed to be a canyon carver with good handling. I don't know about that. I think it's a bit heavier to be a legit canyon carver. But anyway, as part of the focus on driving dynamics, the crossover comes equipped with adaptive suspension. So it's going to be more comfortable. And that also comes with torque vectoring and specially developed tires. So this is meant to handle quite well. Not sure if that's going to be the case, but I'm guessing it probably will be. 
It also comes with customizable V mode as well as Brembo front brakes. So it probably got better brakes than a Model Y Performance. The brakes are 15.4 inches or 390 millimeters, but you'd want big brakes considering the weight of this car too. The regular Optic V um, gets 1500 pound towing. So that's 680 kilograms. Can't tow very much to be honest, but anyhow, at least it can do something. So what's the difference other than that with the regular optic well it gets an additional 219 horsepower motor on the front that's 163 kilowatt and has you know some different body cladding it's got a gloss black front splitter a body color components a black roof and a revised intake with a unique mesh pattern i don't know about you guys i'm not really a big fan of the whole black roof you know different body color and then have a black roof thing i'm not really into that i think it's sort of a bit too fast and the furious for me but anyway i mean some people like that right one reason the range is less than the regular model by a fair bit is it has pretty damn big wheels 21 inch alloy wheels and those wheels have a satin graphite finish as well as a laser etched v-series badge you can also see a diffuser as well as unique uh, badging for the rear quarter glass. The Optic V comes in apparently eight different colors. There's deep ocean tint coat, a Magnus metal frost. Who's coming up with these names? Holy moly. Uh, you can also get ca a carbon fiber package that includes a front splitter, rear diffuser, and a mid-mounted spoiler, which just adds stuff to your car for extra money that won't actually do anything for you guys speaking of that interior i've got to say i think it's one of the best general motors interiors i've ever seen they've done quite a good job with it yeah that's a place that i, I wouldn't mind spending a bit of time in to be honest what do you guys think about this is this a vehicle that appeals to you i hope it does well i think cadillac they're going all electric only uh, i reckon that's great news so I'm all in on Cadillac. I think we should support them as an electric car, as an EV community. Uh, good on them again. They're in the right direction. General Motors, though, hmm, you know, not so much. I think they, um, they, they've sort of paused EV, EV sales a little bit. Uh, now, they're now spending a billion dollars on their new V8 engines, which will be 0.01% more efficient than the previous model. Or maybe they just won't break like the previous V8s, which have been breaking all over the world. Anyhow, forget the V8. The future is obviously electric. Let me know what you think in the comments. Bye-bye. Do you guys ever have those moments where you look and see what you think, hey, hang on a minute, that's the future. Is, things are changing, and this is what the future is going to look like. That's what I see here with these, these new gas stations that, well, they're not gas stations. They look like them, but they're actually electric car stations. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you with us. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe below. We normally do about six or seven videos per day. General Motors, they are building gas stations all over America, DC fast chargers. They are installing 350 kilowatt charging stations along the busiest travel corridors in the US. They look very similar to a gas station. There's gotta be so many people pulling into these, th these stations. They're not gonna know. They're gonna think, oh, this is a gas station. They're gonna pull up and go, ah, oh, um, this, is, this is the future. I guess I'm not part of the future. I, I better keep driving and try and find a gas station. Gas stations will start to close on mass across the United States. It's been happening in China. Have a look at China. Look how many DC fire chargers they're, they're installing in China. And then you have a look at how many, how many gas stations are closing down as a result. It's the only logical conclusion here. And as there becomes less and less gas stations, people who own, you know, this is going to be still a while yet, but people who people who own internal combustion engine cars, they're going to start to get panicking. They're going to start to panic because you can't fill up your internal combustion car at home. It's going to be like the situation in California for people who own hydrogen powered vehicles, because really in 10 or 15 years from now, when almost every car that's sold in America and almost and 100% of the cars sold in Europe and China and probably most parts of the world, when they're all EVs, uh, these gas stations will close really fast or they'll have to change to having EV ch plugs. And then it's going to be quite expensive to ship this fuel around, this gasoline and diesel around because the demand won't be high enough to actually make it, basically make this the economy, the situation of having these isolated gas stations in isolated locations, it'll be quite expensive to maintain those locations.